Hello, animators and artists, and welcome to Bread Week. Our guests for tonight's interview are Jesse and Ben Juono. Jesse is a writer for television and animation with a love of baking. Her husband, Ben, is a storyboard artist and director at Disney TVA. Disney, uh, Jesse wrote and created an original series, Baker's Dozen, with storyboards and animation by Ben, music by Mark Star Sparling, uh, character design by Chayne Curtis, and color design by Matt Doering. Jesse and Ben are joining us right now on today's stream, so welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> So uh, first, let me start off by congratulating you on publishing the first Baker's Dozen short. Um, Jesse, when did you first start thinking about this series? Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for having us. Uh, yeah. So basically, Baker's Dozen started off as kind of just a little personal project for me. A few years ago, um, I was like looking for ideas to put together to make sort of sample scripts to send out and uh, I was first of all thinking, I ended up thinking about a few things that kind of culminated in this. Uh, first of all was that uh, I wanted a project about cousins because I'm an only child. I have step siblings, but I didn't grow up with them, but I did grow up with, uh, there's four of us girl cousins all together. And I, uh, at least on my dad's side of the family. And it's such a special relationship that I uh, felt like I didn't really see in uh, a lot of TV animation. A lot of shows are about uh, family, but mostly about like siblings and parents. Um, so I wanted something about that. And within my family, uh, baking is kind of a big deal. We have like a family cookbook. We have a lot of recipes that are handed down. Uh, some, recipes, some recipes you should never try. Right, yeah. There are, <laughs> there's some fun, recipes, some fun recipes we should try sometime. But uh, there's like cheesecake recipes that go down from my great grandparents. And my, uh, my great great grandpa had a uh, a bagel shop in New York at the turn of the century. So a lot of that sort of was inspiring, uh, but I was also watching a lot of Great British Bake Off, uh, and I loved just, you know, the kindness of that show and wholesome. the wholesomeness wholesome. yeah, of yeah, that show. And I thought, man, it would be kind of funny to combo like something as wholesome as like a baking show with something as fun and adventurous as pirates. I always really love pirates, especially like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Everyone loves pirates. I love, <laughs> I love One Piece uh, and, and Pirates of the Caribbean. So uh, I comboed those things and I wound up having a uh, mentorship uh, that summer with the woman in animation with uh, Nicole Rivera, who works in development over at Cartoon Network. And she helped me sort of like kind of piece it all together. And I, I pretty much for a while just used it as a sample spec script. Um, and you made a pitch Bible out of that. Well. I did, yeah. I made a little pitch Bible, and not a lot really like moved with it, just because I just was using it um, as a sample thing. And but I really loved it uh, so much so that Ben like commissioned our friend Cheyenne to do uh, the character designs of our four main girls, and. Uh, you know, I sort of just sat there, just like, I really loved it, didn't really know what to do with it. And then last March, uh, there, there's something going on with Twitter where people were posting about their favorite, like their personal projects, things that they haven't really told people about. And I was, we were going into a movie. Was I, it Sonic? No, it was, <laughs> it was Onward. It was Onward, okay. Yeah. Um, One of those. No, it would be funny if it was Sonic. Um, <laughs> No, we were going into a movie and I was like, you know, I'm just going to drop this. I'm just going to put this out there and like see if anyone cares. And uh, after the movie, I came back to it being like really overwhelmed. People were so uh, loving and warming, warm, felt very warm towards <laughs> it. Uh, and uh, it was it had such a great response. And a few week, like, weeks later, we went into lockdown yeah. um, because of the pandemic. <laughs> and I... Uh, we sort of sat there like, you know, like people really like this, like, and we really like this. We should this. do something with it. Maybe we should do something with mm -hmm. it. And yeah. uh, so from there, we were just pretty much like, 
you know, we could go the route of trying to pitch it or do a whole development thing, but we know that stuff can take years and years. And uh, we just really wanted to make something very personal, very us, and work together on something that yeah. we don't usually get to work together on projects. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where it came from. And now, like, we're like nine, ten months later, we, we finally finished the first one, and we're hoping to do a few more before the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question in the chat for um, Jesse. Uh, as a writer, can you tell us how the experience was working this close to a storyboard artist compared to a studio, where what you write gets sent to someone that you might not know? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I like the storyboard artist uh, a lot. They're married, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was I was thinking uh, just about how. Uh, anytime I've had writing experiences, and I, uh, I haven't gotten really the opportunity to work directly with the board artists or any of the artists on the shows I've written for. And this is really special because, you know, even as we're moving forward, we're uh, handing out uh, our, ne our next scripts to board artists that we really like. And we get to sit there and be like, to, you know, discuss it and work it out and problem solve together. And it's so much fun. And I usually when I'm writing, it's kind of like, you know, I'm working with a story editor and we figure it out and we outline and then the script's done. And that's all I kind of see of it. I haven't gotten to be on a production where I'm directly working with, even in proximity with the artist. It's usually very compartmentalized, right? You're, right. You're sure. a writer, you're just writing. You're a board artist, you're just boarding. You're a color designer, you just coloring. You're just very compartmentalized. This one, this is a nice little thing where we get to like, you know, talk to people and and and, and basically make this group project and get different voices. Yeah, and it's just really nice to to also be like, hey, if you think of something funnier, like yeah. I'm so excited about that, and like let's make it like the most fun thing for for uh, for that artist. And for us, um, I'm just really happy to be able to sit there and be like actively plussing it. And I th and I think that's kind of the thing that that you know we 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 learn a lot um, um, in our work and 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 in this project as well, which is that things are things get better when you when you um, have good people put their voices in it. If it's too singular vision, it sometimes like you know can, is it, can it be good? Yes, it can be good, but can be better, that's why you kind of need other people's voices. And we've been, you know, again, the second show that's coming out, um, we have several more artists that we really like, and they're, they're gonna add stuff to it the same way, like when Jesse wrote this and I started working on it, like I started trying out new gags and, and Jesse goes, oh, it, that's great. How about we add this instead of that? So there's a lot of that collaborative process that, yeah. that, that we really like. Yeah. Definitely don't get to do that every day. No, no. Yeah, yeah I mean that, that that's a big part of like the, the the process, both writing and for storyboarding, where you have an idea and you're sort of shopping around a joke, and you can plus it, and it gets better as more people look at it. Um, so we've been talking about the short for almost ten minutes, but for for those of our viewers who haven't seen the first short, how would you describe Baker's Dozen? Sure, uh, that, that is a great that is a great question. Uh, basically, the, the little log line of it is that it's about cousins that run a bakery on a stolen pirate ship. Um, more specifically, it's about Maddie, who is the youngest of the cousins, and she is really determined to be an amazing baker. She like adores her cousin. She's so excited to be part of the team, but she's awful at it. She's just so bad and she's so distracted and she's kind of a hot mess disaster she's a disaster and uh so the the whole like overall of the 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 project is that you know she's learning to bake with her cousins and disaster ensues and specifically for these shorts they're kind of uh done in a way that's almost like a like a little youtube um like a YouTube cooking show where she's kind of like, all right, we're going to bake on bake together. And then something goes horribly wrong. That's kind of the, the pattern of yeah. all the upcoming shorts as well. And then uh, 
each one we're going to meet one of her other cousins and they all interact in different funny ways and it's kind of our way to showcase these characters yeah we like to use these shorts as a way to introduce these characters before you know i don't know where we go with this but um this is a nice way to see her interact with her cousins which is the most important thing yeah and it's been really fun to just understand and figure out these characters we have weird revel revelations yes So you mentioned that you commissioned uh, character design work for Baker's Dozen, and I think this might be a good time to show our audience uh, some of the different characters that are in this series. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me share my screen. Um, this one? Yeah. Sure. And while you're pulling that up, uh, I just wanted to ask, um, what was that process like when you were... Uh, having these characters uh, designed for the series, and, and what notes did you include to guide the design process? <laughs> uh, well, this one was uh, this one was a, a surprise for Jessie. It was a birthday present for her. Um, we've always loved uh, Shine and Curtis's work. Like she's she's a friend, and just the, her sensibility and her designs and her designs are is just great. And I and um, one day I discreetly asked Jesse, like, oh, who would you think would be a character designer on this Baker's desk? And she's like, oh, I would love if Sh- Cheyenne like, could design. So I kind of contacted Cheyenne because we, we happened to be working at the same studio at the time and just asked her, like, if she's willing to, like, do four characters and some expression sheets just so we can understand these characters better. Um, Jesse had written up... Uh, a description of each of these characters. So I kind of just sent them to Cheyenne and be like, this is what I did because I've done a preliminary design for Maddie before just to kind of have a good idea, but we could not land on the other ones because I'm not a, I'm not a character designer. So I did, we just sent this, we should, we sent uh, Maddie's design to Cheyenne along with um, some character descriptions that Jesse had written. And then a couple of weeks later, Cheyenne sent me back, um, some characters and I'm like, this is great. This is it. Like it's, it's surprisingly very easy. Um, there's not a lot of notes because because we Just were we were, well it was also blue sky. You know? yeah. It's not like we have a very specific vision that it has to look like this character with this um take on it. It doesn't have to we don't have any of that. And, and and also we weren't you know trying to like do turns or anything. No, we just no. wanted we did not design this with the intent of of um, standard production pipeline. We designed we we did these designs with the intent of exploring the characters. So, um, and a lot of notes. I think you colored it. Yeah, sort of ended up being dropped in some colors and yeah. gave it to Jesse as a surprise. And that was that was all. Like it was never intended to be anything more than that. Um, but look where we're at now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, so we have Bonnie, we have Siobhan, um, she likes to blow things up. We have Maddie, our disaster. (laughs) Um, And then we have Suzette. That's very sweet, but can be easily angered. Uh, There's so much personality in these designs. Yeah. Thank you, Cheyenne. Yeah, yeah, it it wound up being, you know, for the other characters, um, Bonnie and Chiffon, I felt very strongly about their personalities and just sort of Bonnie being kind of like over it. She's done. She's just, she's had, she's been doing this for a long time and she is. She's seen plenty. She's seen a lot and she's very tired and let her have a break you know but uh so she's not really super interested in having maddie as an apprentice and you know with maddie's wonderful sparkling personality uh she's just very sweet so enthusiastic so like excited about this she's just you know a little bit of a little bit of how I feel about myself within the animation community is <laughs> just like I love everything I can't do it <laughs> so uh you know that 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 kind of ended up being a lot of Maddie and uh Chiffon really is just like inventor really excited about blowing stuff up and I uh, that, that's just that's just wound up being just just chaos. She's she's the the chaotic one, and Suzette. I didn't completely have a good um, understanding of print really until I saw Shannon's drawings, where I was like, oh, she's kind of like a mini mouse. And my favorite thing 
um, having worked on some Minnie Mouse projects when I was uh, a secretary, I, my favorite thing about Minnie is when she actually gets to be mad. It's so impactful because she's such a sweet character that, like, you know, you don't want to, like, you know, upset that character. Yeah. It's and, a nice, it's a nice feedback loop. Like, you provide um, Cheyenne, our designer, with some written words. She came back with some designs that further informs us of who these characters are. And, and, and that's, that surprisingly happens at every step. So really something you mentioned point. before too um, was that you were saying um, how uh, in a typical production, most people who work on it don't, don't get the chance to do very many roles. You know, you're sort of either the uh, writer or storyboard artist, or you're doing uh, ink and paint. Um, how did this project compare in scope to your tradition, your your typical roles in animation? Um, well, it's it's nice because. Uh, you know, this is where where we get to actually make decisions that we normally don't get to make because you know we are very compartmentalized in the industry. We specialize because you can't do it all. You can't do it all if it's if it's that kind of scope of production. Um, whereas this one here, um, uh, we get to be more involved. We get to be more involved with decision making and and with the people that that and, and we get to also let the people that we we hired on, on this to to kind of give us a bit more of themselves. Like when we hand out stuff, we literally go like, yeah, run with it. Give us something we, fun. We hire people that were like, we like you um, because of the, like, how yeah. you We like there. you because of you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so that makes it really, really fun to just like, there you know, it doesn't have to be on model even. Yeah. I, <clears throat> And, and I guess for me, um, I think like we said before, that it's just really fun to be able to directly interact with the board artist. I, I get to live the dream of being an ink and paint girl because I did all the coloring uh, for the short. So that, that, you know, it's all stuff that we really don't get to do. And, and we get to work together, which we to work together, we, yeah. we've only sort of worked nearby each other when we were at DreamWorks. We were like, I was on a different show and we've met each other what seven years ago now. Yeah, yeah we've, we've 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 known each other for seven years, and we've never actually worked on the same show until yeah. this. So. And so it's really fun to be able to like create something together. Yeah, and it's all stuff we haven't gotten to do in our yeah. day. And we actually we were actually able to pay everyone. Um, I mean, not yes. a lot because it's a small production, but <laughs> um, it's it's nice that we get to pay our friends to do their to do to do, to have them do their thing, which yeah. is which is great, um, yeah. Uh, was there anything that surprised you during the production of the short? Hmm. How hard it is to make decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you encounter these things where it's like, this is a good decision, but that's also a good decision. Which one do you go with? Yeah. Um, one crossroads that we, um, you know, at some point we contemplated, do we need to have voice actors? Do we need to have voices in this in order for us to be able to present it? Um, do we know any voice actors? Do we know anyone who can help us with this? Should we try it ourselves? We tried it ourselves and we're awful at it. So like, no, no voices. Um, so there's a lot of trials and error in that sense. And then just, um, I think at some point we were thinking, should we color it? Should we not color it? Me being a storyboard person, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with releasing it in black and white. That's how storyboards are. And I felt like all this effort we were putting into it, especially putting music and having all these wonderful people involved, I felt like we should color it. It would take it to a next level. Yeah. And I'm really glad, even though it was I'm glad we did. work. Yeah, was, and I'm glad we did. And that's yeah. kind of the surprising aspect of it. Because for me, you know, I, I, I've, I'm i very good at working in a production team. And I'm always very production-minded. So for me, it's like, is this worth the extra effort that we're putting in? Um, and how much are we getting out of it? Like if we're putting in like an extra, if we're putting in an extra 50% of work, we're only getting 5% in, um, uh, um, kind of value out of it, then that's not worth it. And, and at one point I was wondering like, is it worth it? Is it worth doing the extra coloring step? And it was, it was, that's, a, that's surprising to me, but that's, you know, that's, why we work together, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So one of the things that you mentioned, Ben, was that uh, b because th this is more of like an animatic style, um, your characters don't always have to be on model. Uh, what is the favorite drawing or set of drawings from this project that you've uh, put in? Like, w which ones really made you laugh the most? Um, I think this is, let's see, this one probably. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just had a lot of fun. And, and uh, when, we, when we made this, um, you know, Jesse wrote a script and we kind of went through it and we're kind of like, okay, well, the, 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 you know, these shorts are about exploring the relationship between Maddie and her cousins, but there has to also be something exciting execution-wise in terms of, you know, when you're telling a story, there has to be some kind of escalation. So we kind of went with this formula of like, let's start normal and have it be ridiculous as we go. And we want that to kind of be expressed in, 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 the, in the characters as well. So we start with we start with her just in a normal stage and then things just get more and more ridiculous um, to a point where, you know, it's just, it's just so dramatic and weird. And, and that, that really allows us to, to push these characters, push the expressions. And the nice thing about keeping it in the storyboard style is that these are my shorthands. Um, I don't have to deal with putting these characters on model so I can just, you know, run wild with it, push it as much as I can without having to go back to Cheyenne and go like, can you help us get this expression on model? You know, like it's, that's the stuff that we, we felt wasn't worth the extra effort. Yeah, um, I think it works perfectly yeah. as is, even though it's not exactly, you know, yeah. on model. I mean, clearly like Bonnie here, it looks different from the Bonnie in the model, but you know, everyone gets to put a little bit of their personality. That's what's fun. Yeah, I think what's interesting about animation is that uh, a lot of it tends to be very self-effacing, right? You have um, uh, productions where you, you try to hide the fact that each person was on the production, um, whereas with this, you, you really see like this is this is very hand-drawn, um, and uh, I, I think that um, that's very valuable to have. I, I think it shows that there was like labor and work that went into the production. Well, we're artists first and foremost, <laughs> and we love our friends. And you know, our 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 goal also is to make sure that whoever is working on it, their people can see their handprints on it. You yeah. know, um, uh, the uh, Cheyenne's design, Mark's music. I just keep going back to Mark's music. I think the same way Cheyenne's design informed us more of the characters. Mark's music informed us more of the the the, the whole show and what this should feel like. Um, and it's 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 great when you just let people bring in something different to the table. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What? made you want to create this as an independent series and what are your hopes and ambitions for baker's dozen huh. um well i think it as we as an independent series uh i think there's so much we can do we can do without having anyone else's input and that's really freeing especially when you know no, well, we want the inputs of the people that we work with, um, right. but not because the, the 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 thing about about having a big studio backing, having actually having money <laughs> to produce these things <laughs> is that um, you sometimes what comes out is different from what you wanted it to start when you what you start what it started out to be, which is not always a bad thing because because you know you get more input from people. Um, you you um, more collaboration, more collaboration. But I think to me the biggest thing is time. Yeah, we did this. We pretty much well. I mean, we did this on and off. But if I were to just you know to be less lazy and actually worked on it more at night, <laughs> um, we probably could release a short every like what three months. You know, yeah. um, it's the, the intention has never been let's get ourselves a TV show where we hire 70 people and and get a, a, a studio to animate. The, number, the intention was never that. The intention has always been, let's put up something fun on Twitter. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> yeah. we, we, uh, during the pandemic, we, we fall into that doom scrolling thing. You know, you just lie on the couch feeling depressed about the world, you scroll, 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 scroll. Once in a while, you come across something fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it just it just lifts you up like um, like the shoe shabby thing that 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 was that was around uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I can ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, and and that's and you know, and we we kind of use that in, in in the baker's cousin as well, the baker's dozen as well. And that's always been the stuff that I like to do. Like we, we like to you just want to quickly make stuff that makes us laugh, and yeah. then also hopefully make our friends and make, make our friends and, and just make people. You know, people get to see it. It doesn't have to be a long thing. It doesn't have to be an epic thing. People get to watch it for like thirty seconds, and then they it it brightens their day for the next five minutes, and then they forget about it. That's cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not it's never intended to be anything more. Yeah. And then, like I said before, it's it's a really special opportunity for us to work together, yeah. and I uh, and I really enjoy that. <laughs> and, Where do we um, hope to go from here? I don't know. We, we don't. We really we keep being asked that, and I mean, we have the plans of doing at least three more of these to introduce the other cousins and. Uh, Beyond that, I guess we're going to kind of just see where it takes us yeah. and, you know, what what we, what we what feels right. It's good to have something on the side that's not like high stakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have 25 millions riding on, $25 million riding on this. Oh, no, what if I fail? Like this one is just like, I feel like working on it tonight. I don't yeah. feel like working on it tonight. It's We're not pressuring ourselves to like. And we're not precious. Yeah. 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 So, so, so a bit of that vibe that you, you want the audience to have of it being more of like laid back, like watching um, a baking TV show, uh, you, you kind of want to capture a little bit of that for yourselves when you're working on that too. Absolutely. Um, uh, we, I mean, we've, we've started baking quite a bit too. Um, I don't know how much of the the baking is actually going to make it into this considering this is, this is a very whimsical world where, where, the yeast is alive and various things come to life. And we have an episode, we have a, a short coming out where, where the fruits are alive. Yeah, and which probably puts a lot of like ethical questions in the air, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> they, they enjoy it as long as the bread and the, the food at the end looks happy. It's, yeah, it, it's, it, not, it's, it's, it's weird and it's a, it's a concept, it is. It is. It is a concept that I thought was real fun when you when you first pitched it to me. Where this is a world where things that are you know fruits are you know fruits come from trees. Trees are a living thing. You know, even if they're not like animals, what if they're actually alive? And what if if you want to make a strawberry cheesecake, you have to beat the strawberries first. You have to like go to an island and and fight a bunch of strawberries and beat them into submission before you can actually make strawberry cheesecake with them like that's yeah. just a real fun to us. <laughs> yeah I, I thought it was really funny when you had um y- your character fighting against the dough because like baking is a very physical thing you know any baker will tell you that they do really uh put a lot of you know muscle into oh, kneading their dough. it's a workout <laughs> it's a workout when we when we used to make challah, yeah. um, and, and at one point we had a friend come over to help us like just knead the dough because it's so hard. It's it's it's, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's one thing that's really rewarding um, coming out of this was they put it on TikTok and I got a bunch of people that told me like, oh, my family like has a bakery and this is so accurate. <laughs> I never yeah. expected to get that sort of response, but it was very rewarding. Well, to it's me, the like, feeling, have, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to be very correct about the... Yeah, the, I, I think that that's a good way of putting it. it. It's the feeling of it more so than like whether we're accurately putting the right yeah. you know, number of teaspoons in. Yeah, it's something. 602 grams of flour. Yeah. Don't forget the extra two grams type of thing. Well, speaking of, um, you know, the, the the process of baking, can we talk about some of the research that went into Baker's Dozen? Because I, I saw some of the pictures that you posted, and uh, I just have to say, your, your hum and touch and look amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, quote unquote research, because it's us just being hungry and eating. We just like to bake so we, we just, can eat it. Yeah, but it, I, some of it sort of like osmosis its way into yeah i think some of it sort of like i was asking i was asking ben earlier like do you think because you need bread all the time that this has helped you draw it better and i 
I don't think kneading <laughs> bread helps me draw bread better. Uh, <laughs> but I know the struggle like this. I hope I'm still sharing a screen, but yeah, <laughs> it's I, how it feels. When... I know this particular struggle right yeah. here, right here. Because some, you know, you 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 learn how to knead, and kneading is hard. And sometimes you just get frustrated. You just start punching the dough, and it's like, oh, that's fine. You're still kneading it with force. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's funny. I guess like a little bit of it is would be considered research. And and I think uh, at the end of the day, when I'm putting the scripts together, it's like, all right, like let's pick a recipe to like revolve this around and we had a lot of discussions about like is this visually exciting yeah. like it can be a really cool or complicated recipe but if it just ends up being like well it's just mixing the whole time yeah. like that's not super exciting to look at so we have a lot of those things to keep in mind and we haven't like necessarily baked everything that we are planning on making short time but uh having a little bit of that experience i think we even watched like some master class stuff uh, we made some Madeleines, made which some is Madeleines. where Maddie gets her name from. Uh, that that yeah, I think all of it sort of like builds into <laughs> us, but you know, to make it feel there's a, it yeah, feel there's there's not really like a focused effort to research because uh, well, we don't want remember, this to be a teaching. <laughs> we don't want this to be a teaching thing for sure. And I remember that one time we actually went to a library and studied pirate ship books. Oh my god, yeah. And that <laughs> went nowhere. Yeah. Well, it, this also doesn't necessarily take place in like a real pirate yeah. time either. It's obviously so, a different yeah, universe. But um, we like to call it exploration as opposed to research. Yeah. Yeah. It just in, like some of the influences and makes it fun. Um, mm. But we're trying not to hold too tight to like accuracy because uh, it is a fantastical world um, at the end of the day. As long as there's a little bit of grounding, I think it, it gets its point across. But I also don't want anyone to like be like, you did, you didn't bake this right and you skipped this step and yeah. be like, well, we, we were trying to get through it quickly so that we can get to the fun stuff. Yeah, it's, it's more about entertainment value than it's about correctness. So like we're not making educational videos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, don't like, follow this. <laughs> kids are going to be like, why did the yeast come alive? Yeah. So one of the things that we, we, we noticed um, and one of the reasons why that this really came on the radar was because this the short was made using Storyboard Pro, which is typically used in pre-production. Like most people um, don't look at uh, animatics. And um, I mean, I think animatics are really neat. What led you to, to you using Storyboard Pro for the short's production? Well, efficiency. I, efficiency. I think really you know. I, I made. I, I posted a question on Twitter some uh, a couple of weeks ago about how, hey, um, why do you guys animate with harmony? Like, what's the advantage of harmony? And a lot of the answers that I get back basically kind of convince me that it really is just what is your tool of trade? What are you comfortable with? It is never about. The, the software really it's never you can you, you want to animate it too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love storyboard pro yes. you know yes. and 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 well I guess what I'm saying is that if you want to animate but with paper animate with paper for me I've been a storyboard artist since I think I got my first job in 2012 and I didn't actually start using storyboard pro until 2016 2000 yeah 2016 uh, when I when I started at Disney. And when I started using Storyboard Pro, it's like, it was a struggle at first um, because it's a new software. But then once I got the hang of it, it's absolutely efficient for the purposes of storyboarding. So I got to a point where I made my own key maps. I have a, I have a gaming keypad here where I map all my shortcuts and, and I just get really, really fast at it to a point where sometimes, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the software, the computer can't keep up. <laughs> and there's a lot of cool um, organization tricks, like the way the layers are organized, the way we can select multiple panels. We can select a particular layer across multiple panels and just change all the colors at the same time. That's how we got to color this. Yeah. That's how we got to, to color the whole thing on Storyboard. Also with 
that, it's just like we both had the program and just yeah. want, and you already have your whole method, the storyboard yeah. from work that it was a really easy transition that I, like we sat down and he told me all of his like, you know, I got her all my tricks. Yeah, yeah, I could be a revisionist now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it wound up being uh, yeah. so easy because like we had it set up. So, okay, this is the, the layer where we're going to color um, everything with Bonnie and we're going to make sure it's the same name on all of our layers yeah. so that that way when I make a mistake and we had to fix something, it was easy for us yeah. to like fix stuff. And um, a lot of organized. You know, I, I asked people about hard Harmony and the thing about harmony is that you know you can have your 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 different layers on different timeline, and that is something that I wish I had on Storyboard Pro. But to be fair, like I've been using Storyboard Pro for so long and for all for a lot of stuff that I you know I, I did buy harmony. I did buy harmony and I did try it. And having to relearn my having to set up a new workflow was it just eventually became too much trouble and I've already been so comfortable with the software that I'm just like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it on here. If I need it to be on ones, I can split panels and make it on one, 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 one. If I need it to be on twos, I can just extend those panels. Like I just it's just so comfortable for me. Um yeah, that's why that's why it's on Storyboard Pro. Uh that's and it because we're that's uncomfortable. Sure. Nice too that since we're handing out the boards to other artists, they yeah. already have storyboard. They already have storyboard pro. Okay. Um, makes it really easy to, to, you know, move stuff back and forth. It's a pipeline that all of us are familiar with, that at least everyone that's involved in the making of this. Yeah. Was there anything that you had to figure out uh, that you do differently in storyboarding that um, maybe works differently when you're making a, a short that's meant to be um, seen by, by an audience? That's a good question. I, I don't think, at least for me, it's not really that different. I guess when I'm storyboarding, I'm posting out less because when I'm storyboarding, it's about getting the story across. Yeah, um, to where, another studio. To another studio. Whereas with whereas with um, the short, like I'm really, I really have fun with the editing aspect of it. Like once we got the music, I had I retimed everything, and I'm like, I want to make sure every single one of these punches land on the beat of the music and when we when it that that when the music changes we go to a different pulse and music changes again we go to a different pulse like being able to just make it um be in sync with with everything else and that's not something you don't really get to do because when you're storyboarding there's no music yeah. you know the music's not there yet. the music gets gets cut gets put in at the very end um and the thing that you know we the this the storyboarding aspect of it comes handy when, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just going to keep this on a cycle. Like, it's literally just two drawings, right? Just two yeah. drawings, and you can repeat this for as long as you want, and it's entertaining. Which is so great also for coloring, because because he is so good at having strong poses repeat, I was able to, like, copy and paste the color and make it. Cycle is the name of the game. Uh, and again, <laughs> if, you, if you watch the short, there's not actually that many drawings in there. There's a lot of repeated drawings yeah. because because that is kind of the sensibility. Um, it, re it reminds me a little bit of like the Dave Pilkey sort of uh, comic books where you flip the page back and forward to get you know Captain Underpants punching a monster repeatedly. Yeah, it it is it is, and and, and you know this is a, a personal philosophy of mine, which is that. Uh, there's different kinds of animation, right? I know the, the ones that people love is the, the, the ones that's super fluid, like you get that, um, so that feature-like old Disney quality, like cool fluid animation. But I think there's something fun in these like limited, just pop, 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 and you just kind of cycle through. Gumball is a huge, yeah. huge inspiration. Gumball sure. is very efficient with their poses. And, and, and yeah, I mean, we try to, we try to lean into the limitations, and because because it's true, Storyboard Pro doesn't have all the things that you can do with Harmony. But I think there is a benefit to leaning into limitation as opposed to having a lot of options to bring. You That's know? true. Do you have any advice for artists who want to make their own animated series but don't know where to start? I mean, my number one is always like just like go for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it's not really helping anyone. Yeah. Um, 
the one thing that uh, wanting to make something but not knowing where to start is kind of the same problem that us storyboard artists have when we're supposed to start storyboarding a script. And that first drawing is always the hardest thing to come up with. It's called the blank canvas syndrome. <laughs> when the canvas is blank, you don't really know what to do. So um, the way I get, get around that is to just draw something. Just draw one thing first, and then it usually... The next, the, the, and then the next draw is, and then the next drawing gets easier. The next drawing gets easier. Um, if you want to make your own animated short, um, what is the tool at your disposal? Do you have Photoshop? Do you have Storybook? Or what is it that you're comfortable with already? Just start something there. Start something there. Start making that first drawing. Start making that the first two drawings. Start making the first three drawings. Before you know it, you have a whole scene of five or six drawings and now you have your first scene you know you just you just gotta start somewhere and just kind of keep going that's that's the hardest part and i think uh you know something i had learned i never like finished um like making a short film when i was in school and you know part of my frustrations and all that was just like doing it by myself and i think there's um so I, I enjoy this so much more being part of a group and being, well, adding, being able to pay uh, my friends, but I, I think there the is The community some, support, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Keeping we, each other accountable. We both have agreed that we couldn't do this without the other. And Absolutely. if you're able to partner with people, um, you know, especially very, like, evenly and be able to do the work together, um, it, it's it's a wonderful feeling and I think if you can find people that you're really excited to work with and they're really excited to work with you people that I <clears throat> uh, can fill in the the you know the, the qualities you're missing I think that makes it really surround fun. yourself with people that that um, <laughs> that can help surround yourself with people who, who Kind of have the same motivation as you, the same interest as you, the, the 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 ones that can push you out of the comfort zone and kind of hold you accountable. Because sometimes, again, um, I'm doing this at night after work, and sometimes I'm tired, and and it takes Jesse to be like, "Hey, um, <laughs> do, 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 do you want to start, you know, working on the next scene?" And then you know, and then similarly, I go to Jesse. I was like, "Hey." Maybe you should work on that next script. Like there's, yeah. there's, you know, keeping each other accountable. And the nice thing about having other people to work with is that when you do get to a point when you finish something, like when I finish this whole part and I showed it to Jesse, and she was just laughing across throughout this whole thing. And it's great to see that, you know, it's like, oh, oh, it, it, it worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah, it made her feel something. <laughs> We're not dead inside. <laughs> So you both have had like really fascinating careers in animation. How did you both enter into the industry? Oh. <laughs> you have the exciting. Uh, is it exciting? I think it it's is. boring. Um, I, I, I got into this industry because I couldn't get a job as a teacher. Um, I went to school for physics. I got my master's in physics. I was trying to get a job as a, as a, community college physics teacher, physics professor, but um, there's none in Southern California. So um, I had to teach part-time at several places and I was living with my parents and I couldn't make any money. Um, but I've also, I've also always been drawing on the side. I used to sell fan art at Artist Alley and that was my first community. Like every year um, I go to Anime Expo and I'm just, that's where I get to see all my friends once a year who flew in from Canada, from different states, from different countries. And, you know, we get to spend four days together um, just talking about the, the, the different stuff that we love. And um, at one point, uh, one of my friends got a job in the animation industry. I didn't even know the animation industry existed. And she told me, oh, you should try storyboarding. And I was like, what is storyboarding? <laughs> and, and this was in 2011. And so she sent me like uh, a link to some classes that are local. And so I took, I took a storyboarding class. Um, I started doing more and more storyboarding. I eventually got a portfolio. Um, the portfolio got me my first job. 
and I transitioned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I always had my eyes set on animation. I went to school for it. Um, I wound up getting a couple of internships. I, I interned at Cartoon Network and DreamWorks, uh, primarily because uh, when when I initially had started getting interviews, uh, I was rejected. Um, and one of my friends had been like, well, just call them back and say, and, and ask if, if they have anything and else. Job. <laughs> and then I, I did, for whatever reason, I, was, I did, and they were like, sure, interview for this internship instead. And um, I did and wound up changing my life. And so pretty much, I, um, I didn't finish school, but I wound up hopping around in production jobs. I went to Disney, I went to DreamWorks, DreamWorks where we were met. Yeah. And, um, thank you, DreamWorks. Thank you, DreamWorks. <laughs> um, I went to WB, and I was trying to actually be a storyboard artist for a long time. And when I finally got the opportunity to do so, I was not good at it uh, at all. <laughs> I love drawing, but you know, there's so many things about storyboarding that were just not intuitive and just really <laughs> made me cry. I, I, um, I was trying to I was trying to train her in storyboarding, and I made her cry. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. it's fine. It worked out better <laughs> that way. Um, but in the process of getting like those opportunities, I got to also write, and I found most people were. Like, wow, you're writing so much better than you're boarding. And, uh, but I also enjoyed it more. When I started getting here, putting my efforts into writing, um, I had a lot more fun. And when I was able to, you know, have those opportunities to write for people, it was like the greatest joy of my life. And I still, and I'm still in animation doing, um, you know, other work, uh, like Cartoon Network, and I help out in like talent development, and I've done a lot of production work. So all of those experiences have sort of been informing me and helping me uh, become a better writer, I think, <laughs> I hope. Um, well, I think, I think ultimately, it's like both of us kind of, um, we have to fail at something first <laughs> before we get to. Fail real hard. Well, well, that's the thing. Like I, I, I felt like I failed real hard. I went to grad school because I wanted to get my PhD in physics. And when I was in grad school, I found I realized that I was just not smart enough. And my physics professors back then was just like, "You have no hope. Like this is, you know, you are, you're not good enough." You're not good enough. I had professors tell me I would be a failure too. That was so. that, that was depressing. <laughs> that was depressing because your whole life I went in, in high school. I was like I want to go into physics. I want to research. I have a research paper in 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 in, in uh, particle physics because that was my my specialty. Um, I went to undergrad for physics. I went to grad school for physics. That has been my whole life. And then to get to um, sort of almost the end, and then suddenly being told you're not good enough. It's it's a crushing blow. So yeah. I kind of just wandered around aimlessly for a couple of years before stumbling upon this and realizing that you know what I've never been that good in physics. I've always been better at drawing because I used to always draw like little things on the side, just doodle here and there. You did comics. like comics, yeah. I did comics, and and um, you, you. I think both of us are like that, where we thought we wanted to set out to do something and have to get a reality check and, and fail at it and then realize that, you know, that was needed. That had to happen so that we could open ourselves up to other options that turned out is a better one for us. Right. That's, yeah. I think that's a big, I think that's a very important lesson to learn. Like it's okay to fail at something because that's just part of your journey to get you to somewhere where you want to. Sorry, Sorry, if you can, if you can hear our dog whining, <laughs> she's just like, oh. We, we will never complain about a, a, a dog being in a stream. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things that we, we, we see from time to time is, um, you know, students will message us and say, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get into uh, an animation program, but I'm worried that my drawings aren't good enough. I'm worried that um, I'm not learning as quickly as my peers are learning and I'm never going to be good enough. 
And I, I think one of the, the things that people should take away is that um, you don't know where you're going to be in the future. You don't know what your career is going to look like. And you're probably not going to have things figured out out of high school. Some people do. Absolutely. And uh, that's usually not the case for most people. Um, I got my first industry job when I was 29. Um, you're not, you're not, what was it? Your, your whole, your 20s is for you to figure out what you really, really want to do. Um, and then your 30s is your trying to get what you really want to do. Our whole life is a, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey. It's, it's, a, it's okay if you don't have it figured out. And I think the one, sorry, the one most important thing is that you can't compare yourself to um, other people. Um, just because they're moving faster than you, um, it doesn't mean that it, it, it doesn't affect you. Other people's successes or failures don't affect you. Like it's better for you to just focus on what you do and actually figure out if it is truly what you want, what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of that, especially since a lot of my work has, has I've worked with a lot of interns, I've worked with like the our training program, and even the the people that come in really uh, young, they don't, they don't necessarily have it more figured out no. than people that come in later. Uh, sometimes I see people that are super talented and they're like, you know what, I don't love this. Yeah. And they end up changing paths as well. And so I was just, like you said, it's you know not a competition. Um, it's not. I've worked with talented people who got their first industry job like at 20. And then by the time they're 23, they're burnt out and they left the industry. That too. Yeah. So it's 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 not a competition. It's not a race to get to where you want to be. I mean, you you have a goal. If you get if you reach your goal when you're 25, what are you gonna do afterwards? Yeah. You know, like you 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 some, you, you really gotta slow down and just just uh, just take take it easy. Um, focus on uh, people who are worried that you know, oh, my drawings aren't that good. You know, you know, the truth is that in this industry, you have to get to a certain level of, of draftsmanship. But there's also a way of, do you want to be the anatomical kind of artist or do you want to be the cartoony kind of artist where it's more about comedy and expression? It's really important for you to understand who you are mm -hmm. and, and what your strengths are. I've seen too many people whose strength, strength leans one way, but they want to be the other way that they're not very strong at. And if you want to do that, then that's a lot of work. You have to accept that that's a lot of work. So ultimately it's about understanding yourself. Mm -hmm. And understanding yourself doesn't have anything to do with how fast other, the people around you are moving. Yep. I also think that um, a lot of people may think about like careers in animation. Uh, animator tends to be like, the thing everybody thinks about. The, the, there isn't a lot of awareness outside of the industry about all the different production roles. And, you know, if you aren't the best animator, there are other roles in animation that uh, are also, like, very fulfilling and very important in a production. Every role is important. You need... You, you, usually, you can't just have a production with two people. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you... Understand that the industry is a group project. If you want to do everything yourself, you're not. It's not what this industry is because you can't do everything yourself. Um, yeah. You will be very, very overwhelmed and burnt out and tired if you try to do everything yourself. So, the, <laughs> this is gonna sound real sad, but the sooner, the sooner you understand that you are a cog in the machine, but you can strive to be the best cog possible, <laughs> um, right? <laughs> If you strive to be the best cog possible and you're doing your cog job really well, um, I I don't know. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is turning real sad, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I can't do anything okay. else. I, I, I can storyboard really well, <laughs> and I'm 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 quite contented. In the uh, in the interest of being the uh, the best cog possible, I need to mention that we are nearly running out of time. Um, ben, Jesse, where can our viewers learn more about Baker's Dozen and watch the first short? 
Um, we have the Twitter account. Um, we, yeah. uh, I'm on Twitter um, as uh, at E1N. So if you guys want to, you know, you guys want to message me there, I'll be happy. Jesse is on Twitter as Jesse Juana. Yep, it's just my name. Jesse Juana, J U W O N O. And then the Baker's uh, the Baker's does a Twitter account is at Baker's Cousins. Yes. And there's links there. Uh, that, well, actually, the short is right. right the short there. is there. We haven't really posted much. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also a link to the YouTube page. Yeah, there's right. YouTube page, there's an Instagram, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and we're we're uh, we're not really Instagram people or YouTube. We're very active people. on Twitter. We're very active we're on Twitter. Talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're very active on Twitter, so like the the a lot of this stuff is probably gonna shop on Twitter first. That's probably the best place to find us. Yes. All right. Well, Jesse, Ben, thank and, and thank you everybody for watching to the end of the interview. If you're interested in trying out the latest release of Storyboard Pro, you can download a 21 day free trial from our website. That's tuneboom.com. And we also offer discounted licenses for students. Uh, and be sure to keep an eye on our Twitch channel. We have more art streams and rig reviews coming up. So stay tuned. And until next time.